uh, joining us now to talk about India's G20 presidency and how it has fared. Avni Mishra, advocate and lead advisor, strategy and research of the compliance calendar, LLP. Also with me, Dr. Asif Iqbal, foreign policy expert. Uh, he's also been with the government uh, of Republic of Suriname, President uh, Indian Economic Trade Organization. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, both of you. Uh, to you first, Dr. Asif Iqbal, how do you think India's G20 presidency has fared so far? Because, of course, the government's bid has been to uh, showcase Bharat to the world. And, of course, the idea is to uh, pitch it as people's presidency. So far, what do you think have been the highlights, the big takeaways of India's G20 presidency? Uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, well, what I feel is that uh, the the G20 this year has been, uh, you know, the India's achievement as the routine rotational presidency of G20, and it's it seems to be a quite huge diplomatic achievement. Uh, with the fact that India has recommended uh, AU to be there as the G21, and the uh, inclusion of the African nations uh, has been widely accepted, and it has been seconded already by the Chinese side, by the Russian side. Uh, both have taken the credit uh, for saying that, you know, we were the ones who have initiated this and we are the ones who have seconded this. And India is formalizing the relationship of the African nations into the EU, into this G20 has been a very big achievement. This is one of the big takeaways that we are going to be having. Apart from that, the fact also that Joe Biden uh, as a diplomatic, uh, you know, chief will be coming and attending. It's a very big impasse that India has been able to pass through, especially with the Western and the United Nations, U.S. Uh, opinion about the Ukraine war. Uh, this is something really good that India has been able to have them on the table and uh, initiate these talks. And the Delhi Declaration also is going to be a very big achievement if we are able to jointly draft and use the same language that can be appealing uh, to both sides to reach a consensus regarding, uh, regarding the Ukraine uh, war. And uh, I believe that the EU uh, has also quoted uh, saying that the language needs to be changed a little bit so that the Delhi Declaration on the Ukraine war uh, can magnify and can satisfy all sides uh, without really touching on the diplomatic part. However, the Indian side has clearly mentioned that uh, G20 is more about uh, uh, more about uh, promoting international economic cooperation and not to discuss any geopolitical issues. So that is something that course, India is you know, very how clear. India has also been you know, pitching itself and it, it indeed has emerged as a voice of the global south. Avni Mishra, how has India's you know, presidency been an outlier? Because in terms of the numbers, certainly it has been, hasn't it? Because we've seen you know, over 200 meetings across cities, across 60 cities. Now we have over two, you know, one lakh delegates attending the G20 presidency as well. So it has been an outlier in more ways than one because you know, many would say that you know, it's a rotational presidency. Every country, every member nation gets uh, the presidency one once. But you know, India's presidency truly has been, uh, you know, a diplomatic outlier. Oh, absolutely, Vedant. Um, we've been an outlier in uh, uh, several uh, different dimensions. Actually, I mean, to think of it, in the last century, we were uh, going to different uh, Western nations to ask for uh, technologies for partnerships. Uh, especially for our space program. Uh, you might remember we were denied the cryogenic uh, engine technologies by the US. Um, and this is a saga that was, uh, you know, when we look back at the last century, I think India has come a really long way. And I think our focus on democracy, on shared values, on, uh, you know, the, the vibrant population that we have and the fact that we're focusing so much on Vasudev Kutumbakam, on bringing everyone together. Uh, at a time when uh, global events have shown that uh, gro global problems are becoming increasingly interconnected. Right? We come from an experience of the pandemic, uh, of crisis in public health. Um, we see poverty, we see environmental issues. So I think India's leadership uh, of the G20 could not have come for a better at a better time. And we are really setting the global agenda and moving from a reactive to a proactive foreign policy. And also our focus on Global South, which had so far been ignored. Uh, I mean, we've invited uh, Nigeria, Oman, our neighbor Bangladesh. Um, and we are also, uh, in, uh, you know, when we talk about our neighborhood, we are uh, increasing our focus on BRICS, on BIMSTEC. So it's, it's if, I mean, if we look at it eerily, we are sort of bringing everyone together and uh, renewing our focus 
on uh, shared knowledge and shared prosperity which is what the prime minister had That's mentioned That's an interesting point you are making that you know India's G20 presidency also comes at an interesting time globally and Dr Asif Iqbal uh, you know this is a time of shifting global dynamics we have of course seen uh, you know the Russia Ukraine war of course uh, the world uh, is still perhaps some parts are recovering from uh, you know the ravages of the pandemic so given the fact that it's a volatile time globally and in terms of you know shifting global dynamics shifting dynamics mixed geopolitically how important is india's g20 pres- presidency in that context are you looking at uh, you know what what should be the focus areas given the fact that climate change is a, of course an important priority energy is an important priority crypto is something that has emerged an important uh, focus area what do you think uh, our g20 presidency should now focus on as we uh, you know head into that important uh, heads of state summit uh i i believe that uh, this g20 has once uh, it, it has achieved a uh, you know great feat because a country of 1.4 billion people has hosted so that has given a lot of impasse to the whole g20 uh, you know in india especially the leadership has taken over and everybody in india is now feeling that g20 has been a very uh, matter of pride for them so that is something that is going to now uh, um, you know accelerate the indian the diaspora and the indians around the world okay. to talk about india's so, leadership so that's to an start important promoting. point again that you know it's of course something that matters to an average voter this time something that we've not seen earlier g20 yeah. has largely been confined to delhi corridors and hyderabad house but uh, you know avni uh, what do you think are going to be the challenges to the joint communique because now that is going to be the focus uh, many say that perhaps uh, uh, ukraine could be an insurmountable issue as far as you know the, that joint communique is concerned uh absolutely i think the west uh, clearly has an agenda when it comes to the g20 and uh, i think india can play a very good role of a mediator because uh, of the strategic autonomy we've displayed in the past whether it's uh, engaging with russia on uh, uh, our defense systems or maintaining our partnership uh, with the us so i believe we are very uniquely poised to sort of uh, uh Uh, uh, keep our own uh, strategic interests in mind but also listen to the best and come to a mutual conclusion because i believe uh, the world is torn between two different factions right now with uh, you know the rise of fundamentalism radicalism and india being neatly situated between the far east right. and the west uh, uh, definitely has a role to play we were a part of the uh, non permanent uh, uh, member of the unsc as well and we've been advocating for those reforms and here's a p5 member uh, being an agitator in uh, uh, you know this case and we we've seen the un deadlock uh, play out uh, for several years now and as so you mentioned 20... you know india has displayed a great deal of strategic autonomy so that is something that we will see in the heads of state summit as well remains to be seen how that how that pans out important bilaterals on the cards as well thank you so much uh, to the both of you for joining us